Uh, folks, it's just a silly moustache here. And if you can hear something in the background that sounds like rain, it's because it's raining really heavily. Um, and my wife's gone out for a long, nice long walk, bless her. Uh, so I thought I'd take this time for a little rant. Um, I spend quite a lot of time on various guitar-related forums, and I often see um, comments like, help me choose my next guitar. I don't know what guitar I want to buy, things like that. And so it set me to wondering, what are your criteria when you go out to buy a guitar? Is it, um, uh, is it the bling? I never thought I would buy something covered in abalone like this, but yes, I have. Or is it a lovely sunburst like this? Um, or is it um, something that's really terribly, terribly plain but functional? Or is it something that looks really vintage? Uh, or is it something that <laughs> really is very vintage? Do you go for a Dreadnought or a Jumbo or an OM? Or something else. Do you go for rosewood back and sides, mahogany back and sides, maple back and sides? Or should we be looking at something else as a bit more of a priority? And what I'm thinking about is these, right? And the way you play your guitar. Now, um, up until about 1929 30, um, Martin guitars uh, had, uh, and this isn't a Martin guitar, but it's a very good replica of one. Uh, they had three sizes, uh, generally speaking. They had a two and a one and a no. Oh, I'll show you the no. This is a size O, which wasn't called a parlor. It was called a size O concert. And then they had a double O, which is the other one that I've just shown you and Martin had a kind of equivalent size and then they had a triple O and the triple O was the largest guitar they made up until 1931 when they came out with the Dreadnought. All right. Now in 1929 they bought out something called the OM which was a triple O that was squished down and given a longer thinner neck. Why? Why? That's because one guy who played banjo and guitar in um, a dance band called Perry Bechtel wanted a Martin guitar that would compete with the Gibson Star Archtops. These things had become the thing to play in, um, in jazz and dance bands uh, with the advent of swing and things like that and they were replacing the tenor banjo which was no longer appropriate and the banjo players had to change to guitar. Well they were used to very long, very thin um, uh, fretboards and playing four, four strings at a time. And so they developed this idea, perfected by Freddie Green, of playing minimal amounts of strings, often, um, often three strings at a time, uh, but very rarely six. And uh, they wanted something fast and easy and thin, and they were, you know, it was all that downstroke stuff. Um, and it was decided in the flat top market that that's what everybody was going to play on flat top guitars. And so they came out in 14 fret versions with thin necks because everybody was just going to play dance band type rhythms. Now they weren't, of course they weren't, but it stuck. And people tend to buy what they can find. And um, the old things with the, uh, with the uh, 14, uh, 12 fret, and the wider necks got really neglected uh, for a long, 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 long time. Uh, apart from some folk guitarists, folk finger stylists, but people went to these new dreadnoughts. The 14 fret dreadnought came out in 1934. Very thin neck, um, but whether you were playing finger style or whatever, that's what you used. Or, well, OMs weren't introduced until the 70s, so you know there, there wasn't so much choice and the older things were being neglected. 
I think it was Stefan Grossman who told me once that he could pick up um, a size O or a double O uh, in a 40s type style for a few hundred dollars uh, because no one wanted them, you know, uh, at one time in the 60s, I think. Um, so, whether we're going for the looks, the tone woods, the size, I think there's something else to consider. These things and the way you use them. Now, I'm having a bit of difficulty at the moment because I have trigger fingers and I've had carbon tunnel syndrome and, and um, Jupiterunus contracture and all that sort of stuff. And so I know how, the, how value these things are when they're not comfortable or how problem, problematic they are when they're not comfortable. So I think that there's something that we should also consider, perhaps a little bit more importantly than the finish, the brand or the tone woods. And that's, does the guitar fit you? You don't go into a shop and buy a great new suit of clothes that looks great, but isn't your size. Maybe you do, I don't know. Who buys suits anyway? Um, so, the point I wanted to make is there's three things that I suggest you consider. And that is uh, the nut width. That is the width of the nut exactly where it joins the fretboard. All right. How are you going to know that? It's difficult to measure with a ruler. Yeah. Um, I bought one of these things. It's called a digital caliper. And I bought this off of eBay, new or Amazon or something, for about £10. They are really good and useful tools. And a guitarist should have a few tools about him or her. So, nut width. You'll find guitars that are still being sold with a nut width of 1 in 11 sixteenths, which was made for those old jazzers, yeah? I even had an Epiphone once that was 1 and 5 eighths. Too thin. Um, so, uh, I believe Martin are going from 1 11 sixteenths, giving that up and going to 1 and 3 quarters which will suit most people. Now, this isn't a problem for some people, but it is for more people than we think. And I see people are putting a capo, tuning down and putting a capo on second. I say, why that? They say it's more comfortable. Well, you've got the wrong guitar, yeah? Um, so, think about your nut width. My preference is one and 13 sixteenths. I have one guitar that is only one and three quarters, but that brings me on to my next thing. It has a very deep neck profile. Neck profile. There are all sorts of things. Um, uh, I was just looking on the Martin website and they have something called Performing Artist, which is terribly shadow, shallow um, and um, neck. I don't know why you would want that. Uh, but um, I first encountered this problem when I exchanged or trade, I sold my 1973 Martin D35 and I got myself a new Martin J40 which had the same nut width but a very very shallow neck and I found it was unplayable to me. I was buzzing all over the place. Um, I mean my fingers were buzzing strings on the fretboard. I wasn't really buzzing all over the place. Um, so neck profiles come in different shapes. They come in um, a C, like this one, beautiful C shape. Uh, they come in a modified V, which is like it's a rounded V and then comes to a point, but the point, then the point is rounded, right? Some of the old guitars literally had a V shape and they hurt. I had, I had one for a while. Um, and, um, and they come uh, in different depths throughout the, 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 the um, throughout the neck, and I, I don't expect you to go measuring every single thing, but just test it with your hand and think: Is this really going to be comfortable? The other thing, and this is where this swing comes into use again, is the string spacing. The string spacing is from the centre of the base E to the centre of the treble, or the centre of the treble to the centre of the base E, right? As the strings run over the saddle, that is your saddle string spacing. 
and that is important if you want to do a little bit more than just stroking the strings in a strum. Yeah, so um, think about that. If they're too narrow, which I've got one that's as thin as two and one eighth, and it's an archtop guitar, and it's just it's literally made for that, yeah, and nothing else. Um, but if you're going to do some finger style, if you're going to do some flat spinging, you want space in between those strings um, in order to play cleanly and clearly with your right hand, as well as fret cleanly and clearly with your left hand. So, what am I saying here? Think about the nut width. 1 and 11 sixteenths is the thinnest you'll probably get nowadays, which is 42 and a half millimeters approximately. One and three quarters is becoming more and more common, which is about 44 and a half millimeters. And one and 13 sixteenths, which is my favorite, is about 46 millimeters. One and seven eighths, which is which was very common on the old 12 fret Martins, double, uh, triple O's, treble O's, uh, 47 and a half millimeters. I'm rounding these up. And on my 12 string, I have, I have a Martin 12 string, which is a one and seven eighths nut, only barely just playable. But my harmony has a two inch nut, a two inch nut, which is not half as difficult to play and most classical guitars have a two inch nut, which is about 50 to 51 millimeters, depending. Think about the string spacing on the saddle. Two and one eighths, 54 mil is really, really thin. Two and five sixteenths, two and three eighths, 58, 59, 60 millimeters is probably optimal. Neck profiles. Do you like a C profile? Do you like a modified V? Do you want, um, uh, a modern one or a vintage design, uh, um, Martin's call, everybody calls them slightly different things. Um, and uh, this performing artist neck looks pretty awful. Um, so think about this. Now, there's more details about all of these in a website that I found out today called sixstringacoustic.com. There's lots of very interesting information on there. Sixstringacoustic.com, and I shall put a comment down at the bottom. So I'm going to pack up now. Um, I've shown you most of these guitars, I guess. Is the bling your prime um, uh, buying factor? Is is the sunburst or the uh, the maple back and sides, or, the, or is it a guitar that's really going to do what you want? Is suitable for your playing style? You know, if you're going to play jazz, yeah, an art shop is going to sound better, or you're going to be more appropriate. You know, if you've got to play blues, you don't, you know, maybe it's something like this. Uh, you don't take um, a size O to a bluegrass jam, you know. Um, but think about what you're going to do with it. Think about how it fits these. If you force your hands to do something that's not comfortable, you're going to have problems with them. Take it from an old man with hand problems. Okay, so that's it. If you have been, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, I love seeing them at the bottom here and I'd be pleased to answer, answer them. And um, if you think you could benefit from um, a Zoom session or two or three or four from me, um, I have some vacancies at the moment. Uh, so uh, please contact me. And that's it. Bye for now. Bye.